Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, Mr. Vidic here. Uh, today we're starting a, a new unit on algebraic e equations. And uh, the first lesson is 6.1 uh, step equations. Okay, so let's uh, first look at what this whole unit's all about and how it relates to our uh, previous unit. So in the previous unit, we've uh, we were looking at algebraic expressions uh, for example we were looking at things like uh, 4 plus 3 n plus uh, you know m squared okay well this is an algebraic uh, expression uh, because because you can't really do anything further with this question, um, you can simplify it uh, by collecting your like terms, but but that's as far as you can get. Okay. On the other hand, uh, algebraic equations. Uh, what the difference is is that you can actually get an answer, or you can solve uh, your solve your uh, solve your equation or solve for your symbols. For example, if I had four plus three n plus n squared equals 5. Uh, this makes it, this equal sign here, makes it an algebraic equation. And what you're able to do, well, you might not be able to do in grade 8, but eventually what you'll be able to do is you, you'll be able to actually get an answer for, for n. Uh, in other words, eventually you can get something that n equals some number. Okay, so again, the difference between algebraic expressions and algebraic equations is that equations you can solve for your variables. Okay, so let's let's get right into it and uh, and and do a few examples. And and again, the first you know the key word of equations, okay, is is this uh, equal. This beginning of each word equal the equal sign. That kind of gives it away that that algebraic equations there's going to be an equal sign in them. Okay, so let's do a few examples. Okay, example number one. Let's first uh, come up with a come up with an algebraic equation. So I can say p uh, p plus three equals seven. Okay. Again, in this in this question here, you're trying to solve for p. Solving for p means get an answer or get in uh, get a value for p. Okay, so the, the way we can read this is some number p plus three gives us seven. Well, most of us can figure out, you know just by by using mental math here what p is and i'm pretty sure we all get p equals four down here because four plus three will give us seven okay so i've i've gone and solved for for p this is this this is what we mean when we say solve for p what is the value of p p equals four okay but how do we do that a bit more formally well solving Solving equations, and even though this one looks fairly simple, there, there will be some harder ones, and you are going to have to follow certain rules. And in order to to um, to to understand how to solve equations, you need to understand that uh, the uh, adding is the opposite of subtracting, multiplication is the opposite of dividing, and squaring something is the opposite of square rooting that same thing. Okay, so to solve for this P, I need to get it by itself, or I need to get it on its own on the left side, just like it is here. Once, I, once I'm able to get it on its own, then whatever's on the right side, whatever number's on the right side has to equal that P. So right now, I see that if I look at my equal sign, there's the left side, left side of the equal sign and there's the right side of the equal sign there okay on the left side I have P and the 3 on the right side I have the 7 so what your goal here 
to do is to get the P on its own on the left side. What that means is that this 3 has to go on the other side, okay, if you're going to be able to solve for P. Okay, well, this is where this, these opposites come in, come in handy here. Okay, right now, what's happening to the, to the 3 is that it's being added to the P. So to do the to get rid of it, or to get rid of it, or I should say to get it to the other, to the right side, okay, you have to do the opposite calculation of adding. And the opposite calculation of adding is subtracting. So I'm going to subtract the three, and I'm going to subtract the three from both sides. Well, look what happens now. Okay, when I subtract the three, three minus three, well that gives me a zero, so I can get rid of it over here. And 7 minus 3 gives me a 4. So let me go ahead and write my equation again down here. 7 minus 3 is 4. 3 minus 3 is 0. And then the P is over here. It will be P plus 0 equals 4. Well, I don't really have to write that 0 here. And, um, and look what happens now. There's the P equals 4. And that's exactly what, what we had you know, using mental math. Okay, let's go ahead and do a few more, a uh, few more examples here, uh, using other operations. Okay, so, okay, so the first one, uh, the first, uh, the second operation we can use. Let's say we had something like uh, uh, p. Let's use p again. P minus ten equals uh, equals 7. Okay, well again, in order to solve for the P, I need to get it by itself on the left side. And what that means is I have to move this negative 10 over to the, to the right side of the equal sign. So in order to do that, I have to do the opposite of what, the opposite operation of what, of what it is now. But right now it is minus 10, so I'm going to go ahead and add 10 to both sides. Okay, and again, the key thing is it's an equation. So one rule you can think about is whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So that's why that's you have to keep things equal. If I just added 10 over here, well then this would no longer be equal because the left side would be 10 more. I need to keep things balanced. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Well, that gets rid of this 10 over here because minus 10 plus 10 is 0, and leaves the P by itself. And then on the right side, I have 7 plus 10 is 17. And you can go ahead and check your answer by, by putting, by substituting this P over here, and I have 17 minus 10 equals 7. Okay, let's do uh, another example using multiplication. For example, if I had 4N, equals 20 okay again your goal here is to solve for n and i have to get n by itself i have to get it so it looks like this n equals some number so right now i see that it is 4 times n equals 20 well i think most of us can figure out that 4 times 5 will give us 20 so n is going to be 5 but let's go ahead and use our <coughs> use our uh, op opposite operation method to uh, to solve for n. So again, this 4 here is in our way. I need to get it over here. So I'm going to look at the operation between the 4 and the n, and that's multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite, and the opposite of mul multiplying is dividing here. So I'm going to divide by 4 and again whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other side and there it is 4 divided by 4 is going to be 1 so I'm going to get go ahead and get rid of that and then 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5 and and that is how you get n by itself okay last operation is going to be um, I'm going to divide for example if I had uh, let's use a s divided by uh, divided by 5 equals 30 
Okay, and I want to solve for s. So some number divided by 5 equals 30. And again, I'm dividing by 5. So to get s by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. And what happens there is you're going to get s times 5, which is 5s over 5. I probably shouldn't have used s and 5s because they look very similar. Equals 30 times 5. And look what happens here. The 5 divided by 5 disappears. And I'm left with s equals 150. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.